Praise God. Amen. We are alive. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Welcome to Walking to a Christian Fellowship Church service. Amen. So we are having a uh, service today. We are live on Facebook audio, and we are on the phone with our conference call live. We just want to thank God today because he's been such a good God to us. In spite of what we're facing, God has been good and has revealed some things to us as we take our journey through the Psalms. So we're going to begin our service with uh, our city of Brown. No. We're going to be with Daphne, Minister Daphne, Prophetess Daphne, you reading Psalms 33 and giving us a word of encouragement. Psalms 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into a jar, into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world re re revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the people. But the plan of the Lord stands firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the heart of all who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive from in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen. May God add a blessing to the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Brother Arsenio. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father God, we come to you today, Father With all thankfulness, Jesus, we thank you for keeping us all, Father God, through, through this uh, virus and all this going on today, Father God. Uh, we, we ask uh, that, you know, just open up our minds, our ears, and, uh, and you know, heed to the word of uh, that's what's going to be spoken on today, Father God. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for the precious
mute your phones if you're on.
to Jesus. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I think I, I, I it is a privilege and honor. I just can't thank God enough for affording himself to us through Jesus Christ. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he came to save sinners like us. Amen. So I just thank God today. I thank God for everyone that, that, that has shown up today to have some church. And yes, we are just a skeleton crew, but we, we the skeletons that's going to bring some life to these dead bones. Amen. So I just thank God today. I thank God today for walking truth. I thank God today for all the believers. I thank God today for everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus as their Lord and Savior because you are my brother or sister in Christ. It's not about a denomination. It's not about a church name. It's about a Savior that came to save all of us from our sins. It's, it's, about, it's about one who was sent down through 42 generations to offer salvation to a wretch like us. Lord, I just thank you for your blood that cleanses us from all sin. Yes. And, Lord, I thank you for justifying us from your resurrection. And I thank you, Lord, that you are sitting on the right-hand side of God, having all power. And that you are interceding on our behalf at this time. Lord, I just thank you today. Thank you. I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you. And we love you. Because you are holy, oh, so holy. Hallelujah. You are a thrice holy God. Holy, holy, holy. Yes. So we just thank God today again. So we will not pander or belabor the matter. We will go forward in the word of God. So I want to start off by saying if you want to name this sermon, it's when my friend is not my friend. When my friend is not my friend. But I want to tell you about my friend. I want to tell you about my friend. I, my friend has been with me all my life. My friend was there when I was born. When I first came out of my mother's womb, my friend was with me. My friend watched as I turned one years old and played in the cake. My friend was there when I started grade school. My friend, when I first learned my first words, and I learned to say no and mine. <laughs> my friend was there when I first saw something that I wanted that didn't belong to me. And I pointed to it. And my friend said, you can have it. Go over and get it. You saw it. You want it. It's yours. And as I got older, my, my friend was with me to encourage me and give me pride in myself. My friend was there to tell me that there was nobody better than me. My friend patted me on the back all the time, whether I did wrong or whether I did right. My friend convinced me that everything that I did was right if I decided it was right. My friend said, if you want it, go get it. Just do it. It makes no difference who you hurt. It makes no difference who you who, what happens, it makes no difference. The consequences, I am your friend. Mm. Okay. And I like my friend. Because my friend was always for me. Mm -hmm. There was never a time when my friend was against me. Even when I was caught up doing wrong, my friends say, they ain't right. My friends say, they don't know what they're talking about. They have something against you. Even though you got caught with your cookie hands in the jar, see, the, cook, the jar shouldn't have been there and cookies shouldn't have been in it. They should have kept the cookies from you. But since the jar was there and the cookies were there, even though it wasn't your time, you can get what you want because you saw it and you want it. My friend has been with me to this day. But there's one thing about my friend that I want you to know. My friend is my friend until he becomes my enemy. My friend is my friend until I wake up one day and realize that this friend that I've had since birth becomes my enemy. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. My friend was my friend until I understood that my friend's name was sin. My, I knew that my friend 
friend's name was sin. Because I was born in any shape. <laughs> and it followed me all the days of my life. It did to me what no other friend could do because it agreed with me all the time. And then I met somebody like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. And Jesus said, that friend that sinned is really not your friend. Mm -hmm. Paul even said that once I understood the commandments, I realized I was covetous, and I realized that I was a sinner. Yeah. I realized that I was a sinner saved by grace. Yes. But this friend that's not a friend that's sin still dwells in me. And Paul put it like this. He said, there's no good thing that dwells in my flesh. Mm -hmm. But my flesh is where the pride of life comes out of. Mm -hmm. My heart, my deceitful heart. My friend told me I had a good heart, but the Bible said my heart was deceitful and desperately wicked. So my friend is not my friend. And my friend is named Sin. So when I read this story in the Bible, and, and I'm not going to take you to it for, for time's sake, but just all of us who are saints of God remember the story of David and Bathsheba. Yeah. When David should have been one place out to battle, but David decided to stay home. And one day he was walking on his roof and he saw Bathsheba bathing and cleansing herself from her cycle. But she was so beautiful that David's friend tapped on her and said, you want her, don't you? <laughs> David's friend in sin said, you should be in battle, but that's okay. Joe, uh, Joe and them can fight the battle. You can hear, you can have her. But the friend that sin rose strongly in David, just like in us. You know, it encourages us to continue to go forward. So I go from the desire to it now being manifested in the hands. The sin plays into the unpure part of my heart. That is being conformed to the image of God, but it's still there. It's a process. It's called the sanctification process. And we read in Psalms that there's this thing called a pure heart and clean hands. And there is no pure heart and clean hands when I'm dealing with my friend called sin. That's right. When I deal with my friend called sin, there is no pure heart and clean hands. So David then was told that he could have her. And even God sent a messenger to David and said, don't you know that's the daughter and the granddaughter of one of your men of valor? And David said, the friend of sin tapped him on the shoulder and said, don't pay no attention to him. You're the king. You deserve it. Even though you know the law that says thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not labor with another man's wife. But he's just a Hittite. He, he's not even a true Jew. So I'm going to do what I want to do. My friend called sin. So I invited her over and he violated her. And then she sent word back to him and said, look, I'm pregnant. So what that means is he probably violated her more than once. Because it got good to him. See, when sin, your friend, sometimes it get good to you. Your sin, that's your friend. You know, it's, it's, it's the other three real words. It's called fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that when I'm sinning, sin always wants me to keep that he's my friend's secret. See, felt true. That's called iniquity. Mm. See, David wasn't mm. uh, braggadocious about it. He wanted to keep it on what? They call what the down of. Mm. His friend said, the don't. You got it from me, but don't tell him you got it from me. You get your advice from me, don't, don't tell him it's me. Don't tell him that's the sin that's in your skin that you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So then David finds out she's pregnant. So David say, well, how am I going to get out of this one? The friend that sin says, I got, a, I got a solution. I always got a solution, David. Just come to me. Lean on me. When you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, that's sin. So he turned to sin and sin and said, this is what you do. Let's plot and plan to kill her husband. And then 
if she's not far enough long, and then you can marry her, and then ain't no problem. And David said, you know what my friend is saying? That sounds like a good idea. Mm. And we also know how the story ends. And Uriah gets murdered. And then Nathan comes to talk to David and explains to David. You can read it in 2 Samuel. I'll tell you, restart at chapter 10 so you can get the flavor of what's going on. After a big battle, that David decided to stay home in chapter 11. So now we've got this situation where David... So David is uh, walking around, and, 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 and he's, Nathan has come to tell him that he has sinned. And David has come to the conclusion that he has sinned against God, but God has something to say to David first. Mm -hmm. If you go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 12, it says, For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and before the sun. That means God, when you sin in darkness, God don't expose you in light. Amen. <laughs> well, say, Pastor, is that what you're going to talk about? Yeah, I'm going to talk about today because I want you to understand sin is not your friend. Amen. That everything done in the darkness will be brought to light. And your sin which is not your friend will find you out. Meaning your friend, your sinless friend will leave you out there naked. Because it'll never pay the cost. It'll let you pay. And the cost that sin asks you to pay, once found out, is much greater than the fun that you had. Amen. So let's see what sin does to us. Come on. Go to Psalms 31. And I'm going to go backwards. Because sometimes I wonder, verse 1 through 8 is, is like a, the prayer after the fact. And we'll get to that. But let's look at 8 through 13, and let's figure out how David felt when his friends uh, that is sin let him down. Psalm, Psalm 31, Psalm 30. verse 8 through 13, read. Okay. And you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy... You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. So, David starts off because of his sin, he starts saying, because of my sin and exposure of my sin, because God said the, 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 the sword will never leave his house. Mm -hmm. And this is during the time that scholars believe is either the time that, that, that uh, Saul's pursuing him, but really fits into the sign, sign that his own son pursued him. And see, what I teach is, when you plant the seed of sin, which is iniquity, you never know how it's going to grow up. You never know how it's going to blossom. But when you plant the seed of sin, it's going to blossom. But it may not blossom where you want it to. And that's what happened with David. Even though David made a confession and Nathan said, the Lord is not going to take your life, but the sword will never leave your house. See, what God is trying to say, you still say it, but you got to pay the consequences. That's it. That's it. Wow. You got to pay the consequences to your sin. See, because you didn't find out. See, you might not have had to pay the Piper, if you would have confessed your own sin, better yet, you'd have checked yourself before you started talking to your friend called sin. Mm -hmm. See, what we have to see the problem with David was David didn't have the Holy Spirit in him, the Holy Spirit would come upon him. But we have the Holy Spirit in us, we have the greater that's in me that's in the world. So we should be talking to the Holy Spirit and God and His Word more than we dealing with our friend called sin because. 
Paul had the Holy Ghost, but he said, there's nothing good that dwells in my flesh. What he was doing was announcing sin has no more dominion over him. Amen. Come on. Because if we are not condemned, all those in Christ Jesus, we're not condemned. Then sin shouldn't play a big part of our life. I teach that the volume of sin should be turned down and the volume of the thrice hard holy God should be turned up. Amen. But I want you to pay attention to something. In verse 10 it says, my strength fails. My strength. See, when you sin and found out, your strength begins to fail. David began to have physical repercussions from the fact that he had sinned. Now see, your friend has sinned and tell you that. Your friend is sitting and say, you know what? If you found out, I'm going back up and you got to deal with it. I'm going to let you deal with it. And guess what? You're going to have some physical pain from this. You're going to have some anguish from this. You're going to hurt because you sinned. Well, the reason why David hurt, because he was the man of God. And the closer you walk to God, or the steeper you have to climb up that hill, the more sensitive you are when you found out. Like I said, those who look at God lightly and say, I'm on this trajectory where you saved and you're just going to walk this thing out, that's fine. But for those of us who want to have that awesome, magnificent, stupendous, majestic experience with God, we got to go up a steeper hill. Yes, sir. Amen. And see, when we start climbing that steeper hill, sin say, man, that hill too hard to climb. You know what you want. You know your lust burns within you. But you never know how it's going to come back on you. And see, one of the things with David, we find that we find in verse 10, it says, my strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. That means because David felt like a dead man. How many of you feel like a dead man when you sin? Don't lie. Because sin is still your friend. You don't, you don't, you don't, have, you don't have any problem with it. You just, oh, if I get caught, I get caught. If I don't, I don't. I can repent and everything going to be all right. But the problem is you're taking advantage of repentance in a way that it should be because your mind hasn't been changed about your sin. Yes, you haven't decided to make sin your enemy. That's right. Even though it dwells in you, it has no more dominion over you. That's right. Meaning it doesn't have control over you. It doesn't, it doesn't sway you. It doesn't make you do things that you would normally do because you got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. Man. But how did it blossom for David? It blossomed in a son called Absalom. David set forth some events. God set forth some events providentially that made him what we just read. That made him a vagabond. That made him a, 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 a someone they talked about when first the sin that he admitted, one of the consequences was Tabor got raped. By one of his own sons, which was Absalom's blood sister. Then Absalom killed Amon. And then Absalom wanted to take his father's throne because he was mad at his father. You see how this sin affected three other people that had nothing to do with what he did? Mm. See, you just don't know where it's gonna how it's gonna affect the people around you. Mm. So in this, he loses his Absalom eventually gets killed. Ammon gets killed, which is his son. Tabor is raped. He lost three people for his one sin. Because he could control his lust. He never thought that sin would take him down this road. So many of us are dealing with situations that need to be exposed, but don't understand that when we do sin, it has a rippling effect to our families and friends. I'm a witness to that. I know you sit there silent and say, not me, but see, you're lying the truth ain't in you. So sin has this effect on us. Sin, sin has this way of, of exposing us to the, to the point that down the line, when it comes up, it has an effect on everybody. So David not only has to deal with the fact that one son is dead, the other son is dead, and the baby he was going to have with Bathsheba is dead. How many people got to die because of your sin? Oh God. Mm. Now, what you say, well, Pastor, aren't I, aren't I held accountable for the sin that I? Yes, you are. But you can't stop the seed from growing and affecting other people. See? David's accountability came when Nathan said, The sword never your house, which is own beloved son, who was a good looking man. Absalom was the heir apparent. The 
then the kingdom end up in Solomon's hand. And then the kingdom end up broken in two. All because David had a lapse of judgment and he misused his authority that's given by God. Some of the sins of the, of the clergy is that we misuse our power. We only have control. I'm going to say the saints so that you can break away. We only have control and responsibility to you as we teach and preach the word of God. Other than that, we not, might not be the best person you come to when it comes to your money. Mm. And it comes to being an accountant, when it comes to plumbing, when it comes to the affairs of your life. Right. How the pastor going to tell you about marriage when his marriage is raggedy? See, we got to be a little smart with this thing. It's like the only authority I have over walking truth are ones I come to serve, not to serve me. Come on. I come to serve, not to serve me, is when I teach the word of God. Amen. Other than that, they got to get, they got to live out their life. The Bible says you got to work out, walk out your own and work out your own soul salvation. That's what you got to do. I just got to give you some word to hang on. All right. I'm your guide and not your God. Amen. But sin is, a, is, a, is our enemy. And it causes David some problems. And it causes David some grief problems. And it causes David to pray and admit that he sin. First thing David did was admit that he sinned against God. Isn't it interesting? Even though he raped Bathsheba, even though he, commit, he uh, got uh, uh, Uriah to be killed, his first sin, see, see, when sin comes into your life, it's against God. It's not against man. But see, you can't blame sin because it's your sin that dwells within you. So James, when James comes along, James comes and says, when you're drawn away, you're drawn away by your own lust and desires. And when the sin comes to full fruition, mm, come on. Hmm? that's when it comes out like David experienced. See, we need to repent right now. Now, repentance doesn't mean that God is not going to hold you accountable. Repentance means that now that you know you're not going to do that no more. You have a changed mind and a sorry heart. And you're not sorry because you got caught. Because some of us are sorry because we got caught. You're sorry because it displeased God. Amen. You can't earn salvation, but you can appreciate it. Amen. You can't earn sanctification, but you can relent to it and submit to it. And therefore, when we sin, we know that we have a righteous God that's forgiven us. That we want to get back on the right track, going up that mountain because we just slid back. That's why God is married to the backslider. Hallelujah. His church, I wonder, he wants to come back for a church without wrinkle or spot. Yeah. But will we be? Will we be? That's what he desires, and we know that God, that can be a passive desire, meaning God is leaving it to us to come together and get out of these factions that look like church, act like church, but has no love for the church. Mm. One of the biggest sins of the church that becomes your friend is you have no love for one who doesn't look like you, think like you, or practice like you. Amen. Come on. But practicing holiness falls in the category of love. So David decides now, so I'm working back with y'all. Let's go to Psalm 31. Let's see what David prayed because of his iniquity. Verses 1 through 8. In you, O oh Lord, do I take refuge. Mm -hmm. Let me never be put to shame. So in other words, think about this. Think that's what I missed that. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge, but I have committed murder. In you, O oh Lord, I take refuge, and I don't want to be put to shame because I did some iniquitous things. See, man has a funny kind of way of never wanting to expose himself and never be shamed for what he do. See, to me, it's, it, 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 it's kind of, how would I want to say this? It's, it's interesting that David would start off this way, but he should be shamed. But he's praying to God, I get it. You need protection because these people coming after you yeah. <laughs> for what you did. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they're pursuing you with justice, but you want protection. Yeah. How many of y'all want protection when you do something and you're wrong? Yeah. Just like your parents, you do something wrong, you want protection from mom and dad. Regardless of what you did, regardless of how it affect other people, you want mom and daddy to protect you Help from me. the justice that's due to you. Help me, Lord. Read. In your righteousness, deliver me. Now, not in my own, but in yours. See, we don't have a righteousness of our own. 
Some of you saints who walk around pious after you've been in this thing for a long while. Oh, let me let you know something, saints. This is not a union job. Time in don't mean nothing. It's quality time in. It means everything. So in my piousness, David thought, think about what brought about the lust of the flesh, what brought about this situation. David thought he didn't have to go fight. I'm pious. I'm David. I'm the king. I don't have to go. Even though this is the season I'm supposed to be in. Think about this. His season was to fight, and he's sitting back doing something else. How many of you are missing out on God because you operate out of the wrong season? Wow. Or let's put it this way. You're supposed to be doing something, but you're not. You're supposed to be worshiping the spirit and the truth, but you're worshiping in piety. See, David had reached a point where his success got to him. And he said, let somebody else do it. Joab was a mighty man. Joab was a bad man. But David was supposed to go with him because he's the leader. Read. Mm. Incline your ear to me. Mm. Rescue me speedily. Look, look, look about this. Now, not only do I need your refuge, you listen to me, God, please. As I see it, I want you to listen to me. That, that is so amazing that, our, that, that, that we, dealing with a holy God, want him to listen to us in the midst of our iniquity. Be, think about it. You want to try and listen to him before you got caught. You, say, you want to try and listen to him before you got caught, but now you're trying to listen to God and say, God, I want you to climb your ear to me. Hold up. Not tomorrow. Speedily. That means I need you to listen to me now. I need you to listen to my plea because I need to take refuge in you because of your righteousness. All of us come to God like that. We come to God seeking his righteousness, not our own. We want God to listen to us speedily right now. We want God to be our own time God. That's what we say. But we have to understand there's a price to pay when you sin. David's prayer is good and fine. But this is the prayer we all should be praying. Read. Be a rock of refuge for me. A strong fortress to save me. Look at all these visuals. I want to get behind the wall and keep the people out who want to pursue me because I was iniquitous. Read. For you are my rock and my fortress. Mm -hmm. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Now, I'm going to rely on God's name. Why wouldn't I rely on God's name before I see it? I'm going to put it in God's God. God, I need you to save me. Because you said you would. But also you told me don't commit adultery. You told me don't thou, uh, thou shalt not murder. Why wouldn't you listen to me then? Because sin is my friend. Read. You take me, you take me out of the net they have hidden from me. Mm -hmm. For you are my refuge. Uh -huh. Into your hand I commit my spirit. Mm -hmm. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, mm -hmm. but I trust in the Lord. Now think, of, mm -hmm. think about it. You trust in the Lord. When did you start trusting in the Lord? Mm -hmm. You weren't trusting the Lord when you were sinning. Oh See, this is what, to me it's like, I'm not trying to be irreverent to David, but it's like this is after the horse has left the farm, Lord. Yeah. Now you want to say you trust me. Now you want to need my protection. Well, you wouldn't need all this unless you had to, didn't commit sin. Yes, I'm there for you. I'm your rock. I'm your shield. I'm your protection. I'm your fortress. And I will listen to you. But guess what? It's kind of interesting that you would come to me after you've been disobedient. Not to the clergy, but to my word. Now think about this. He forgives you and continues to forgive you because his son shed his blood to you for you to be forgiven. That's what we need to be preaching, saints. We need to be preaching forgiveness that there is this twice, three times holy God that regardless of what you do is willing, able, and powerful to forgive you. He can be your rock, he can be your fortress, he can be your shield, and he will listen to you when you plead out for him. But you just can't come to him any kind of way. Now, this is what I mean. You come as a sinner, and it's not how you dress. A lot of us people, we tell people, we talk to people, they want to come. I'm not ready to come to church. I don't have no church clothes. There's no such thing as church clothes. You got to come as a sinner. But see, the problem with church is they come in as a sinner, and you, the pious church, act like David, that you ain't did no wrong. 
Because you're the king or queen of the church. You got your special seat, you got your special song, and you got your special friends. And you all need to check your salvation. Because when you don't accept someone who comes in who needs the help of Jesus, you are not his church. Amen. Your social club. Mm -hmm. Who parlays themselves, who prides themselves into keeping out the people who are not like them. But we are all sinners. Right. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right. But in verse 4, read verse 4 again. I want to point out something. I'm done. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Now think about this, a net and fishermen. Do the fish want to go into the net? Of course not. And this net is hidden for them. See, sin has the net of the consequences of your action. Mm, come on. Mm. See, when a fisherman lays out a net, the fish try to avoid the net. But when sin is your friend, you swim right into it. And you claim that you a dumb fish and you just fell into it. But see, you're smarter than that. You decide to go into the net. What you say? David is trying to, oh, these friends of mine, these acquaintances of mine, these people who used to love me have now become and taken advantage of my sin. Think about this. When you sin, your friends that are your enemies, your natural friends that are your enemy, have now been positioned to take advantage of you. I'm going to say that again. Maybe say it a different way. When you sin, those frenemies who be around you and pumping your head, being your friend, going to church with you, doing all that, now have caught up with your iniquity and God uses them to come against you because they know more about you than you know about yourself. I see the problem with us is we hook ourselves. They didn't hook David. They were the consequence of David. David hooked himself with the lust of the life, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. See, we, we have to understand, saints, that we are part of this story. We are just like David. We're no different from David. We're just like David. We're no different from Saul. We're just like Saul. When we're drawn away, we're drawn away by our own lost desires. You can't blame it on the devil. You can't blame it on the demons. See, when you blame it on the demons and the devil, you're doing just like Adam did. It's the gift that you gave me. When God gives you his spirit, wow. you can't blame the devil for you going against it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Too many saints talk about what the devil's doing. The devil ain't doing nothing to you because you're doing it to yourself. Right so you want to blame somebody else. That's, in that, that's your friend that's sin telling you. It ain't your fault. It's the devil. And the devil's saying, I don't even know you. Why, why should I mess with you? You don't control nothing. I deal with worlds and systems and principalities. Why would I mess with you? You're going to do it to yourself. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life is, is self-inflicted wounds. So we just thank God today. And again, iniquity gives way. Let's go to Psalm 55. Let's, let's see what our friends do. Psalm 55 and 12. Start there. And read 13. Yeah. Psalms 55 and 12. Check this out now. I'm telling you, you got some friends that's waiting for you to fall. They might be sitting right next to you right now. You might be married to them. Some of you are married to people who, who are looking for you to do things wrong, and they say, this is how they say it to you, because they ain't in church, they say, and you supposed to be saved. That's the word. That's the word. And then you use the lie. I thought you were saying. I ain't. You, you know, no, God no. God ain't through with me yet. Oh. <laughs> I'm a work in progress. Just you take what God is doing to you and use it in a sinful way. Just because God ain't through with you yet, don't give you a license to sin. You state the fact that's happening, but you don't take the fact and make it a function. You don't take the fact that God is not through with you and use it for opportunity to sin. Because Paul said, we dead to sin. It has no more dominion over us. 
So how can I take that scripture and align it with that scripture and say, it makes sense? No. There is no more condemnation in those of us who in Christ Jesus. Sin has no more dominion over us. We have put it to death. We do it daily. But it's the devil's fault. No, it's yours. But you got some people saying, I just want to warn you. Your ultimate enemy, that's your friend, that should be your enemy, is sin that dwells within you. The little bit that's left. The unconverted part of your heart. Your soul is saved, but your heart is in process. Say it again. My heart is in process. Because he promised to give you a heart in his flesh. Not because of you, but because of his son. It's because of Jesus that you're going to get his heart. It's because of Jesus that you got the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. That's why I'm stand for the Lord's sake. Why y'all be praying to angels? What do you need a guardian angel for when you got God in you? Who created angels? Answer me that one some other time. Because if you pray to an angel, which is created thing, you just one step away from praying to me. Romans, what do we learn? Man worships the creation more than the creator. Bless his name, his holy name forever. Man will worship the creation. Angels are created things. They may be powerful, but they are created. God created them. It is never meant for us to worship angels or dead saints. Come on. Some of y'all pray to grandma. She can't do nothing for you. Her heaven or hell has been decided with your sentimental self. But there are some outward friends that wants to take advantage of the sin that's your friend. It said in this scripture right here, watch this. Go ahead, read it. For it is not an enemy who taunts me, uh -huh. then I could bear it. Uh -huh. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me. So it's not your haters, go ahead. Then I could hide from him. Yeah, I could hide from my haters, but? But it is you. Who? A man. What? My equal. What? My companion. My companion. Go ahead. My familiar friend. My familiar friend. Your familiar friend who's your companion that you go to church with, that you hang out with, is waiting for you to slip because of your iniquity and fall. And some of them actually encourage you into falling because they want to take advantage of them. You ought to become a deacon. You ought to become a licensed minister. And they think that maybe, because they've been there longer, that they deserve to become the pastor. Or the head deacon. And what they do is, they creep around and shake your hand, Daphne, and chuckle in your face, and rub you on your back. Just trying to find out some secrets about you. All of a sudden, you're invited to their house and you've never been to their house before and they want to break bread with you. You better watch out, saints. Amen. That person is trying to find some iniquity in you. But they ain't got to look far. <laughs> All they got to do is put the right combination together. And let's go have some fun uh -huh. with your singing. So, Pastor, what are you trying to say? I'm saying the friend that you're seeing is your enemy. And the friend that may be your friend may be your enemy when they convince you to sin. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for showing me myself and, and others if they are willing to admit. Lord, we are all like David in one way or another. Maybe not as bad, maybe not as good, but the thing about it is we have had this iniquity thing in our heart. We were born with it. It was our friend. But Lord, once we came to you, that friend that's called sin became my enemy, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to shield me from it. I ask you, Lord, to teach me how to, even though there's a war going on with inside of me, Lord, let me yield to the power of the Holy Spirit in your word that I may conquer the sin that's in me. Lord, let me hang around saints that are true saints that are not trying to double-cross me, stab me in the back, or talk about me. David found out the hard way because of his sin. People really didn't love him. They wanted his power and authority. But Lord, we have no power. We have no authority. Because you've given all authority and power earth into Jesus' hands. Thank God we don't have what people say we have. Because I see that the people who take advantage of the sin that's in you, they take advantage of you because you think they got some power. But Lord, as David went to the right person, 
He went to Jesus. We go to Jesus because he's our rock, our shield, our salvation. We want him to hear us. We want him to listen to us. We want him to guide us. We want him to come speedily. We want him to give us a path that we can walk on. We want him to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But we have to be willing to submit to him. You are my disciples because you obey my commandments. And the first commandment is love somebody that don't look like you. Love them enough to tell them about Jesus who saves us from sin. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So if you don't know Jesus, this is your time to come. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is your time to come to Christ. This is your time, saints. What are you waiting on? Now is the time for salvation. Now is the time. I don't care what denomination you belong to. Remember, this is not a union job. Just because you got baptized at 12, you got committed at 14, and went to all the services and all the programs, that don't mean you're saved. And you can't get saved on grandmama's coattail. That's right. Salvation is an individual thing with an individual God. Oh, Jesus. It's an individual thing for individuals. Amen. You got to come to Christ with your sin. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the next ones. Right. Don't come to Christ with mine. Come to Christ with yours. And if we come together, maybe we can help each other out. Maybe we can practice Galatians 6 and 1. So many churches don't want to restore those who are caught up in meek and mildness and be careful not to get into the sensationalism of their sin that they may not slip. See, sometimes you slip up thinking you're a stronger saint and sin already know. Let me just start sensationalizing my past and let them start idolizing what you used to do and you're going to slip right back on in with me. You got friends like that, but you can avoid them, oh Lord. By you, by your blood, by your sacrifice, by the Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us. This is the time for salvation. There is no other time. Don't worry about Corona. Worry about the sin. Mm. That's right. See, that's another thing that's distracting us right now. You're so caught up in Corona. See, this is the thing. We are so caught up in Corona, Lord, that we're missing the chance for the gospel. We're so worried about breathing, but the very people will die. We're so worried about our health, wealth, and our prosperity. And this is the time for us to tell people about the goodness of Jesus, regardless of what happened to them. We need to know Jesus. We need to know the salvation. And we need to take the part of his blood to sacrifice. Because one day we're going to be glorified, he promised. The Holy Spirit is conforming us into his image. He's our intercessor, so you can't go wrong with Jesus. We don't have to be like they. You can be like you in Christ Jesus. So Jesus name I pray, amen. amen. All right, we're going to have Arsenio pray us out. I thank everybody for coming and listening. Again, if you want to get in touch with Walk the Truth, you can go to W-I-T-M-I-N at Yahoo.com. You can check us out at Walk the Truth Christian Fellowship page. Walk the Truth Christian Fellowship Church on YouTube and Facebook. Again, thank you. Arsenio, pray us out. Pray us right from there. Go ahead, live. Amen. I always want you to be encouraged, be blessed, and be at peace. And always remember, walk in truth. Peace.